Hello everyone and welcome to the Orchid Saga. My name is Elkin Wiesma and I'm an orchid grower from the Netherlands. And today I have uh, another care club for you guys with uh, quite a lot of other people. But, uh, well, actually it's a revisit for me because I'm now over one year that I uh, do uh, participate with the care collabs. So I will have more revisits this year than actually the first care collab videos. So that's nice, so we can compare our stuff, um, which I uh, personally always enjoy. Uh, but before we do, i like to mention the other channels as well. So uh, while we have a look at my uh, orchids and the cygus are here on the left, you can also see a bit of sun on the blooms, on the plants, because we have a nice sunny day today. Uh, I'm going to mention the, uh, the other ones, like I said. And at first we have plants and other things. Then we have Michelle's Life on Repeat, Attainable Green, Orchids and Vine Boss, Trish Orchid Life, Roger Orchids, Fernanda Nascimento Orchids and Succulents, Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, I'm sorry. Beauty of Orchids and Plants. Orchid 365. Enavogia. I hope I pronounced that right. I probably do the, uh, don't do that <laughs> pronouncing it right. But I'm sorry. Uh, Insta Orchids and Add. He's also from uh, from. Uh, the Frisian from uh, the Netherlands, so that's uh, kind of nice. He lives on the uh, other side of this, uh, of the of Friesland, but um, of Frisia, I should say probably. But we uh, are very close together, in comparison to the rest. <laughs> then we have hillbilly orchids. We have Julie's orchids, and the last one on the list is Nina from Ninja orchids. So those are the ones who also put their uh, care video out on the Zygos today. So I would definitely uh, recommend you guys to have a look at uh, them as well. And uh, I think you can compare the care and see how it uh, fits the best in your uh, environment or things you like, you want to try out. Uh, and that's uh, one of the beauties of these care collabs. So I have my Zygos here. Uh, we have one here, this is my first one. Very special one, it's a uh, gift from my mom. Then I have three here, well actually this is a cross of a zygo. And I have one here. This is my best growing zygo. So let's start with, uh, with that one. This is the one that I did uh, not that long ago, a fairly brutal repot on. So I will link the video. So be aware, it's a very brutal and I know I had some comments because I did break a heck of a lot of roots on this one to get it out of the pot and quite a lot of you guys were suggesting that I should have taken the uh, bottom part of the pot out and leave it with the roots and put it back in this one yes I probably I could have but I think uh, in the process of cutting the uh, bottom off I would have broken anyway quite some roots maybe not as brutal i know but now it's done and the plant is looking fantastic so i think uh, it's doing fine i will take it out of the uh, out of the pot just to have a look but this is that new growth you will see in that video with i believe it was 27 new roots we did count them then and it did make a few more so let's have a closer look it's crazy, it's beautiful, so, so many roots. So therefore, I was like, yeah, I know it's going to be brutal, but this one is working on such a great, nice, nice root system. So I uh, thought, yeah, I should do this. And I think this is going to be the best spike so far, the strongest one. And if I count it right, it will have five blooms. It looks like it makes five buds. That's also the most buds so far for this plant. And it's just turning into a more adult plant. So it's stronger. As you can see, this is the first that bulb that I grew in my care. It's fairly smaller, but then this one came. It's a fairly fat, big <laughs> uh, bulb. So it's very strong. And it's pushing out a heck of a lot of roots. Plus leaves, plus spikes, plus buds. So yeah, this one is doing fairly well. And that considering a... Uh, like I said, brutal repot. So I will come back to this one uh, in, a, in a minute. Let's have a look 
for the other ones and then uh, we will have a look at the root system as far as we uh, we can but we shall see well this is the next one and I have this is the Golden Bay this is uh, a favorite of uh, Michael McCarthy I know <laughs> uh, apparently hard to get um, your hands on this plant in uh, the United States but luckily in Europe it's uh, way easier it has beautiful blooms and as you can see it's working on a spike but you all probably already noticed as well that this new growth, where the spike is coming from, and I, I tried to show it because we have a bit of a strong backlight because of the sun, we can see it's fairly brown. I think I did, as you can see, these all old leaves, old leaves rotting, but I think I did um, manage to get water in the crown or something like that. But luckily we still have one that is doing fine. We have some spot on the tips, I hope you can see it, so I will check this one for spider mites. I did spray it and I think when I did spray it I had some um, fluids going inside of that new uh, growth. But I did uh, decide to continue the spike, so I left uh, that spike on there. And mainly because I have another way better looking new growth there. This one always had two directions of growth for me. So in that new growth as you can see now it's this one is doing way better. So hopefully the one that is about to bloom will make a, a new bulb as well. But at least we have this one to work with. So I will check that one with uh, with you guys on spider mines. Just uh, then I can show you how I do it as well. Uh, once again I'm sorry for the backlight even though it looks beautiful it's sometimes a bit hard gets the plants a bit shady but here we have a new growth as well I try not to touch it because maybe I have some spider mites on my hand this one is uh, currently uh, it was blooming it's done blooming and it's now working on that bulb and I believe that is also a new growth so I think I have three directions of growth I'm not sure at the moment but I will not turn it otherwise I have to touch it again this one I um, is is uh, re yeah restabling it's uh, re um, getting uh, it straight back I should say I'm sorry uh, I couldn't find the right word there but it is now finally making new growth with spikes I hope you can see it here is a spike and um, there in the back we have a spike on a new growth this is a new growth probably a bit too young for putting out a spike. I'm not sure if this new growth will um, produce a spike, but at least we have four new growths and I think I have another one over here, also a new growth. So this one is doing way better now. This is a beautiful cross. It's an own, uh, own cross from, uh, from uh, Landsbergen, the one that I uh, did a visit. The um, nursery, the Ark Nursery uh, last year. So this is their own cross. It's a green one. A beautiful one, uh, very very fragrant, but yeah, it had a lot of roots before I did uh, repot it in self-watering and all those roots died off. So it did take quite, uh, I think probably even about a year to reestablish and uh, to get uh, growing again. I'm sorry for that noise, my lights do not make that noise, uh, but I need them, even though the sun is a bit shining. Then we have my oldest one and it's um, not looking the best I know I had some rot going on it has it did have some uh, root loss and I don't want to touch it again because of the spider bites probably but we have a new growth as you can see and that new growth I hope you can see it I think you can is starting new roots as well this one is a little bit hard to get uh, growing upright so I tried to turn it and that's why I did uh, fail back in the days I don't know uh, who of you guys, one of my subscribers, did ask about why it was hanging over so much? Yeah, that's because I had it on my um, inside of my window. It was growing towards the light, but it, the light was hitting this arcade sideways. And as it does now, so it will grow towards that light, even though I have a light here as well. So I probably should turn it, but I will give it a little bit more time to uh, establish that new growth. So that's one, uh, this one is uh, struggling the most. Something went wrong, I'm not completely sure, but this one, 
yeah it's always a little bit struggling on the other hand it's my first one so I did uh, this one did uh, had to take up with my uh, failures the most <laughs> and then I uh, learned my lesson I think this is my well this is my second one then my third one my fourth one and my fifth one and you can see those do even better so okay let's um, well let's uh, check this one for spider's mites first then I can clean my hands and we will have a look at the root system uh, uh, of this one so first of all I have this cotton uh, this is actually used to remove uh, makeup but it's a nice shape and it's very easy to uh, maneuver uh, in between leaves etc this is my pest spray if I don't forget I will put a link up it's a little bit uh, it's uh, the original recipe comes from Miss Arcadil so it contains a little bit of oil maybe you're familiar with the formula that she uses so I'm, but I'm spraying a little bit uh, on uh, of that solution onto my uh, cotton so there's a little bit of oil and if there are spider mites they will stick to the cotton so I will now uh, get that leaf in the frame so you can probably see it it was the tip of this leaf that we uh, well actually I did touch so what I do I will uh, fold the uh, cotton around it I will squeeze it a little bit not too much of course and then I will pull it upwards like this and the oil will take probably almost every spider mite with it and also the cotton and because I did squeeze it a little bit so yeah I will then do this um, yeah, put it a little bit uh, wrapping uh, the both sides over one another and if it turned out to be orange uh, you have spider mites if you have a brown orange color so far I cannot see it I did for a second thought that I did see some spider mites so I will check it again but then on another leaf with the same cotton because if you have spider mites they are all uh, over your plants probably and you need to spray all of it anyhow so let's and they like to go uh, uh, for new growths and uh, flower spikes so I will check this leaf as well same thing I will rub it a little bit yeah I have a little bit of uh, soap there but um, still no uh, different color wise no uh, orange or brown colors so let me try to check a bus. The buds do not like the oil on them, but uh, I will try gently to, uh, to check it. Even though it might cost me this bud, but I uh, rather lose one bud than the whole plant eventually. And yes, spider mites can do that. It can be very annoying. But still, nothing there. So this one should be okay and didn't uh, that long ago I did uh, spray it for spy spider mites anyhow but it's uh, I'm just checking it because I just wanted to be safe but this leaf seems to uh, mature it lost these guys but probably this one will be okay so I will put it back on the shelf and I will grab the other zygo so we can check out the roots so and here is the next beauty you can see here uh, the spike so this is the beautiful uh, market and I will lower the camera a little bit so we can focus on the roots so I will, will not try to make you dizzy but I will move the camera a little bit so we have that more in frame let me zoom in a little bit and you can see the amount of roots there even some roots that are trying to grow aerial I would prefer to grow them uh, that they would go into the medium but that's on the plant in this case I cannot maneuver them down anymore and let's have a look if we see well we see one growing here let's go in for the media and the rest is covered but I have an air hole here I hope you can see let me check it I'm going to zoom in a little bit more because I'm not sure if you can see it as I would like, oh sorry, I need to move this one, yeah I think you can see it now this beautiful light green 
mess, is a, is a root mess. This was already there. This was after uh, when I did the brutal repot. I I had no idea what to expect to be honest because I was like I said so brutal on the roots, but they still seem to survive. So that's something. So I think I've considering this I uh, probably didn't do as bad job as it may seem in that video because like I said I was I need to need a needed quite some force to get it, the plant out of the pot and I'm making a mess because of course they are growing in cell watering so we have water <laughs> but um, yeah it looks pretty pretty well a fairly nice healthy strong zygo Louis and Darf, by the way, I'm sorry, I did forget to mention name. This is my this is my personal favorite. This is Louis and Louis and Darf, and I, I love love the blooms. So now a little bit uh, about the feeding. Well, in winter they do get the same feed as the rest of my orchids. It's always around 50 uh, up to 80 parts per million. And I have a fertilized uh, video, so if you want to know more about the products that I use, I will uh, put a link in. And I uh, did replace the MSU for rain mix. So far, so good. I really, really love the rain mix. It's way easier for me to uh, to come by, and um, yeah, it, very, it, it seems to me that the arcs really like it. So, but um, yeah, that's uh, that's around the parts per million in winter. In summer they will get around 100 to 150 and I do not uh, change that if even though some plants may be a bit smaller than other ones they all get the same amount and so far so so good they really do go, do go uh, very well for me um, as this one so yeah I'm not gonna change the change that I have a heater there that goes with the system in the house, so that uh, can be turned on if I need to because I keep it in the winter around 18 degrees in here because I grow them in cell watering and they don't like to have it underneath uh, the 18 degrees probably if the room temperature is 18, your water inside of the reservoirs can go down to 16, maybe even 15, there's always a differentiation between the uh, surrounding temperature than an actual temperature inside. So if you're growing cell watering and you didn't uh, measure that or didn't think about it, you may want to check it uh, because there's always a bit of a difference there, in my in my opinion, and especially in winter. In summer, it's not not much, but still, but yeah, then it it doesn't make uh, much of a difference when the um, surrounding temperature is let uh, let's say uh, around 26. You probably have 24 degrees, which is beautiful, inside of your um, reservoir. So that is um, the feeding schedule that I give them currently. Uh, and I do this for three years, maybe four years, at least three years. And it, it, it works for me, so I don't uh, change much. Uh, about every three to four months, uh, I do change... Um, the water. I, um, I will check the pH. If it's too low, they will get fresh water, and I put in a little bit of uh, calcium dolomite powder, and that will um, give uh, does uh, rise the pH up to about seven seven point five, because I don't flush. And over the years, I discovered that in that in my case, my pH will go drop down, uh, and sometimes even. Uh, towards 3.5 pH so that's way too low and that's what um, what happened with this uh, oldest one as well so that, therefore yeah that was one of my uh, failures and I didn't know what the problem was for over a year so you can imagine the situation there I lost quite a lot of roots but now I know the problem and my arcs do way way better and they uh, really uh, like the light they are not shady plants at all. They are not very. Um, they need not uh, incredibly bright light, but I have some uh, shading paint on my window. But you can see I even have a light above them. That's only for in winter. Well, actually in summer I keep it on in my orchid room as well. I put them out in the. Uh, I don't have them on in my uh, greenhouse, but in the orchid room as well because here I have my miltonias and some odontoglossums. They will not get enough light, so I have. Just 
a system all those lamps are connected to one another so I leave them on as well over here just a bit of extra for the dull days because summer in the Netherlands is not always what you might think <laughs> of a summer light wise weather wise so uh, yeah um, so if I, uh, I just keep those lamps on but they they enjoy the the light but not direct sunlight it needs to be filtered as it, in this case and then you, it's okay but uh, yeah I when I started growing them I had them a little bit too shady so if they do not very well for you you or they grow but don't, do not bloom you probably need to give them a little bit more light and that's it yeah I uh, do grow them inorganically because of a use of self watering system I prefer pumice but I will have some lacquer here and there as well because I have lacquer laying around but nowadays I, uh, if I have the chance I will put all my orchids into pumice small or bigger ones and I have for my zygos a combination of bigger uh, pumice with Cintiq these black parts you see are Cintiq called Cintiq the combination of those two are working very well for my zygos uh, because it retains quite a lot of moisture this, the Cintiq but the big pieces of pumice will uh, give more air pockets so the, that combination seems to do the trick for uh, my zygos so yeah I think I covered, uh, covered basically everything if you have any questions please leave them in the comment section below and uh, if you like you might uh, consider subscribing to my channel I would really appreciate it and uh, for all the subscribers the new ones and the ones who were already here a very big thank you and I really hope to see you at one of my next videos bye bye